Hello, my name is Hip Paws. Um, real name is Jamie Gibson. I am with Magic Stone Studios. I am the artist on the Rats project. I'm going to be taking you through a uh, tutorial on how to create your own custom weapon and uh, how to animate it, export it, bring it into UDK. And then the second part of this tutorial, my associate Paul Thomas will take you through setting up your scripting environment and how to create scripts from scratch on how to get it working in game and he will cover all the bases of that I believe he's going to be extending UDK game instead of UT game so you won't be relying on any of those assets and everything that I do will be made from scratch um, aside from the arms that I will be using which I've already modeled because this is a weapons tutorial not so much a character tutorial so I am going to assume that you have a character um, if you have a full character all you really need to do to create these first person arms is just delete the body and keep the arms uh, I have two versions of this here I have a low res version that's 2000 2100 roughly I've got a high-res version that's 4400 polygons. Uh, the only thing to note about this is that they are all quads. There are no triangles going on here. Uh, and there's nothing higher than a four-sided polygon. It makes sculpting and baking normals a lot easier. If I run a render here, you can see that they do have normal map information. Uh, if I get in close and run this render, you can see that there is veins and musculature and, and things like that going on. There's also a diffuse texture with a specular baked in. If I show the material here, you can see I've got arm texture, which is not great. Um, this is not the final texture that we're going to provide. Uh, rather, it's a. Uh, this is kind of just a basic start just to get it going it's fine for the tutorial uh, in the end I will provide a 4096 image that you can take and uh, create lower res in Photoshop if you like um, I will be showing how to rig everything so you can see that if I hit H here and I show my list I've only got the objects there's nothing else uh, if I unhide all, there's nothing else. If I show my layers, there is no other layers. This is all I've got. So we are going to be starting from scratch, creating the bones and rigging it. Uh, I will probably show rigging one or the other of these and then just do the other one in the background. It will be the exact same process. I'll probably rig the low res and when I uh, go to provide it, for those who donate, uh, we will provide the high res as well as the low res. Uh, for the weapon, I'm going to be starting with a low res proxy mesh. Basically, it's going to be very blocky. Uh, minor detail in there, just enough to get it working. And that we will provide for free for those who want to take it further. You can use the tutorial and follow along if you'd like. And um, create your own version and for those who donate we will be providing a the final high-res model which I'm um, gonna keep between five and ten thousand polygons uh, for a first-person model it's perfectly fine to go pretty high with the polygon count because it is there's never ever more than one copy of this object in the game ever because you are the only one that sees the first person weapon so no no worries about going high on the polygon count so we can put some detail in there uh, a lot of these details you know things like if I zoom in um, these little pins and things and minor stuff and and little grooves and and all that are not going to be modeled they're going to be put into the normal map um, as is this engraving and things like that um, this dent here on the front if I do that will be part of the normal map won't be modeled uh, because it's unnecessary it's a, it's a minor detail it's doesn't change the silhouette 
or the, the overall volume of the weapon. Uh, even these grooves here for gripping the slide are going to probably be normal mapped, though if we have enough room, if we're way below budget, we may model this in just so we get better and cleaner shadows on it. Um, it'd be easier to paint. Um, we are not going to call this a Glock. I'm going to create my own uh, brand of it just to avoid um, copyright issues from Glock company. Uh, however, if you do want to make it a Glock, it's just a matter of getting this logo high res and pretty much just inserting it into the normal map. I will keep the rest of this information. Now I'm not going to run through in a tutorial per se on painting this, um, on how to do the textures. However, I will be providing a video of a speed painting of it. I use Mudbox um, and I will paint it in real time and speed up the video and you can watch that if you like set it to music or whatever and um, you can create your own texture if you like however for those who donate I will be providing that high res texture so really quick just to give you a couple of startup hints on where you, where to begin if you haven't done this yet um, the first thing you always want to do whenever you're modeling something is you want to have your statistics up and the button for that is 7 on your keyboard not the numpad just regular keyboard hit 7 and the settings are down here in the corner on your maximized viewport toggle if you right click that it brings up a viewport configuration it's the one quickest way to get to it uh, you can go to statistics here and what I suggest is the settings I have here uh, I believe it defaults like this and you got to remember that in video games, uh, the engines, almost every engine, I believe, uh, only takes into account the triangles. A polygon is not a good representation of what you will see in your final count. So I uncheck it, I keep triangle, and I always keep total and selection. That way I can see I have nothing selected, so I see zero here. If I pick this, I see my polygon count. If I pick this, I see my polygon count. If I right click and go to object properties, you can see the polygon count is also here under vertices and faces. And faces is a individual triangle, not a polygon. Because as some people are aware, I'm sure most everybody, that this 18-sided cylinder here, if I were to convert that to an editable poly and pick this face here that it shows uh, hang on. it shows polygon 92 selected so there is one polygon selected however because this is an 18 sided or 16 sided cylinder that I actually have 16 triangles here and I can show you that if I right click go to object properties and I uncheck edges only you can see I've got these other triangles built in there like that so that's why we go tries here and not polygons the other thing you want to do before you start if this is your first time is you want to go to customize preferences and you want to take this undo's level I believe it defaults at 20 or 50 you want to bring it to at least 200 um, another helpful thing to do is to check wrap cursor near spinner and I will show you what that means. I'll uncheck it. A spinner is any one of these um, up and down arrows. If I take this object here, you can see my coordinates here. I've moved it forward. It's at zero in the X. If I show my grid, um, you can see that X and Y, it's at zero, I mean in the X. Let's move forward in the Y just to show them both and it's at zero in the Z. A spinner is these arrows. If I click up I can increment it but I can also click on either one of them and drag. Now what happens is if I keep dragging down I, you can see my cursor is repeating over my whole screen. Now it's going past the capture window and going down to the bottom of my entire monitor and you can see the numbers increase or decreasing right now in the Z okay I've moved it 
way down. You can see. Um, it's sometimes unwieldy to have your cursor go all the way up and all the way down like that. So if you go to preferences and you say wrap cursor near spinner, you will see that it stays close to the spinner and doesn't ever fly off the screen. And I can still drag up and down as I see fit. Okay, another helpful hint here is that <coughs> I can always right click a spinner and that will put zeros in the fields. Any field in Max that you can drag a spinner, you can also right click the spinner to drop it back to zero and that's pretty helpful. Another thing is that you can see here I'm running a symmetry modifier um, on this one. but This one doesn't have a symmetry modifier. If I take this and I add any kind of um, parametric deformer here, such as bend, just as an example. Isn't don't actually want to do this, but let's say I did. Okay, made this crazy bend. I can always right-click here and say collapse or convert, uh, collapse to or collapse all. If I collapse all, it turns it into an editable poly. So I'll undo that. I also, without me clicking anything, can turn it into an editable poly by seeming magic, but it's not. It's a hotkey. Um, and if you want to set your hotkeys, you go to Customize User Interface. And I'm not sure. I think I might have crashed it. Nope. It just took a second to pop up. Um, let me try to get this. Let me close it, reopen it, Customize User Interface. With a capture going on, sometimes I uh, have unpredictable weird results. Okay, you can see you've got different groups here. Uh, the main group is the main UI here and most of the commands that are available in Max are here and you are able to set a hotkey. Uh, convert to editable m poly um, which is here. You can see that my hotkey is control shift P as my own personal. There's not a lot of hotkeys that use control and shift so that's my general default for setting um, hotkeys. So all you gotta do is say control shift P, come over here highlight the hotkey window, hold control and you see I hold control then I hold shift at the same time and I hit P you can see it's convert to edible poly. It'll tell you what it's already assigned to you can say remove assign. You don't need to save it unless you really want to. Um, so feel free to go through these lists and there's thousands. Um, be careful, you know, you don't want to overwrite something that you may end up using, uh, you know, permanently. Another thing you can do is you can create your own floating window if you want. Let's just say I want to go um, my tools, okay, and you hit OK. You can see you get this little window that comes up here and I can take say the unwrap the other thing the nice thing is is you can click on any one of these and just start typing so I just typed unwrap and you can drag it in there and I just click this and I get the unwrap UVW modifier so if I want to have a floating tool and you can dock this up here which would because of my low res capture here it goes off the screen but there's there's some space all the way up here on the right if you're running this full screen you can stick it up there and you can put as many things that you want in here from this from these lists as you want and really just create your own customized list of tools and you can always hide it it'll pretty much stay in there there's some that they give you um, and there's a hide button here you can see that it's got animation layers tool tools here these are some default stuff that came in with Max. So if you ever wanted to customize it, you can always just say, okay, um, here's, you know, my tools. I want to unhide it. I want to have that, you know, floating wherever I want. You can put it anywhere, you know. Um, like I said, you can dock it. You can just drag it by clicking these these vertical bars here anywhere you want. And it's very, very helpful to have your own customized set of tools. Um, 
I can't really think of too much else that you're going to exact necessarily want to do. I'm running Max 2012 here, which if you left click here defaults to the realistic shader, which you can see I've got some shadows if I hit F4 here and I rotate, you can see I got a I got a shadow back here. It it comes, you know, it's it's a nice preview window, but it, it does kind of bog down the system, especially if your computer's not so great. Um, so it's best to just keep it at the shaded, which is kind of the old school default for Max. Um, G is your grid, nice and simple. If you select an object and you get this box around it, um, which can sometimes actually confuse you into thinking that you have an edge here, like well, what's, what's this cut going going through my model, it's, it's not really a cut, it's this uh, selection box and there's a hotkey, this J, to get rid of that. So if you don't want to show that, you can hit J. It gets rid of that, it's nice. Um, the other thing, you know, obviously Alt middle mouse is going to spin, nothing in middle mouse is going to pan you around, mouse wheel is going to zoom in and out, uh, Z is going to zoom you to your selection. So if I have like a single face selected and I hit Z, it's going to zoom in on that. Be careful if you have one point selected and you zoom in on that, it's going to try to fill that zero space because a point doesn't take up any space. It's just a point. Um, and it's going to zoom you in so close that your near clip is going to freak out. So you got to back it up. But if you select two, it won't get that close. The other thing is if you don't have anything selected and you go to pan, you'll notice that I'm panning way away from my object. However, if I have something selected and I pan, it tries to pan around that center point. So that's that's pretty helpful. And really, that's it. So you know, if you cover some of those things, um, you you should be okay. Just uh, the number one thing that you have to do when you first start Max, no matter what, is you gotta set your undo levels because there are times when you you made a mistake, you need to go back. Um, if this is set to 20, you cannot go back very far. And a lot of operations that you can do in um, 3D Studio, even though you only clicked one thing, it actually counted as 20 operations and it lets you undo them individually. And that can happen to you where you can't undo at all anymore. So max that out to whatever you can. I usually just stick with 200. I've never needed to go back farther than that. So there we have it. We're going to end up with a weapon pretty much just like this only the Glock and those arms and we're gonna have all these animations playing here um, and there you have it